Now and then, a watch comes along and makes you say, what the hell is going on here? This question would be a valid response when seeing these Louis Erard and Alan Silberstein collaborations. Yet despite these watches not going to be for everyone, if you are of the camp saying that watch brands have stopped trying new things, these watches, as well as Louis Erard as a whole, deserve your attention. So before we jump into this one, if you like watches of this style, unique, crazy, we have a whole article looking at watches of this type, we have well over 25 on that list. Watches that might not be for everyone, but if you're trying to get attention, look at something unique, a great place to uh, utilize and be familiar with. If you want those hidden gems in the watch industry, check it out. Link will be in the description down below. And definitely check out the wide selection of Louis Erard watches we have on our website. A really cool brand, probably one of my favorite independent brands under $5,000, really believe in the brands that ethos and what they're going after. And I think the world of independent watchmaking doesn't need to be this very uh, elusive type of thing to chase after. I think there should be some more attainable options and Louis Erard is doing some different things. Even if these aren't your style, definitely check them out. I think the stone dials, the guilloche, as well as some of their enamel pieces might be more up your alley if you're more from a traditional watchmaking perspective. So to answer the question of what is going on here, let's discuss the design of these watches. Upon first examination, you might be tempted to make a cheeky joke about these watches resembling something that would come out of the design department of Ronald McDonald. But there is a lot more depth, intrigue, and fun within these designs that is lost until further inspection. Louis Erard, despite being a brand name that dates back to 1893, was dormant for years, being given a surge of new life in the 21st century, with the brand focusing now providing unique and interesting watch designs while showing reverence to artisanal crafts such as enameling, guilloche, and utilizing stone dials while offering these at prices between $2,000 to $4,000 compared to the competition asking for much more. Along with this focus, now head of the brand, Manuel M, had a desire to collaborate with talented designers and minds in the industry to breathe energy into the brand's creative voice. Although these watches are produced by Louis Erard, the aspects of this design that unquestionably create the most conversation come from the input of celebrated French designer and watch lover, Alan Silberstein. Known for implementing primary colors, simple geometric shapes, and eccentric, even emotional traits into his watch designs over the years, including his own indie brand that reached reasonable niche popularity in the 90s. These watches actually represent Silberstein's third collaboration with Louis Erard, helping establish Silberstein's acclaim in modern watchmaking while selling out nearly immediately after every launch. This latest pairing follows two distinct approaches while encapsulating the lighthearted feel in the process with a regulator and a day date version or a smiley date version I should say. If you are to look at Louis Erard's collection, a style of watch that you will quickly recognize as an area of focus is the regulator. For those not familiar, a regulator is a watch that displays the hours, seconds, and minutes in three isolated displays on the dial, with the minutes being the primary focus accompanied by a larger hand for legibility. As one of the more seldom seen complications, the regulator is historically rooted in clocks utilized in watch workshops, where keeping a precise and coordinated grasp of time between multiple watchmakers was of critical importance. In the modern day, the complication has since been abandoned by many, typically only appearing in brands at the higher end and segments, such as Glassuta Original, Chrono Swiss, Patek Philippe, and Chopard. This watch, unlike the previous iteration, comes in a white opaline dial and then presents the now expected pops of color throughout. At the center, you have your arrow blue minute hand used in tandem with the raised minute track with pill-shaped markers at the five minute positions to tell the time within the hour. Your 12 o'clock display with the central red arrow indicates the hour of the day, and the sub-seconds at six tracks precise time with the help of the serpent yellow hand. But a watch type and complication that isn't as unvisited is your day date or what in this case Louis Erard calls la semaine, French for the week. Its dial design is the same in many ways, apart from the central hand stack and the date and mood indicator above the six o'clock position. These two dial apertures show the date in the lower position with a small oval shaped window revealing a face that changes once per day, starting off unhappy on Monday and looking increasingly happier as the weekend approaches. 
However, there is no proper way to enjoy this as simply setting the indicator daily to mirror your mood is certainly appropriate, as well as sending a message to those around you, whether you're at your breaking point. When it comes to differentiating from the competition in the sub $4,000 price range, there are two primary places to do it best, given the lack of third party movements available beyond a few players. One being the dial, but the other one, and probably not as talked about as much, is having a novel case concept. The case of these AS models are the unsung hero heroes of these designs, in my opinion, consisting of essentially three different components. First, a circular central case is executed in grade two titanium and finished with a matte blasted effect. Rigidly affixed on both sides, we have a long curved case band executed in polished grade five titanium that hold the case and also acts as an anchor point for the hinged lugs, which are blasted and include 22 millimeter pull through openings for the strap. At three, a titanium conical push pull crown is highly polished and finished with a red Louis Arard signature, yet despite looking unique, it is a slippery little bugger and is not the easiest crown to operate. On wrist, as you might expect, the watch wears unlike really anything else, despite what appears to be a pretty standard set of dimensions, highlighted by a 40 millimeter diameter, an 11.6 millimeter thickness, and a lug to lug of 47 millimeters, not counting the hinged lugs. Given the dial to bezel ratio and the unique use of negative space between the central case and the case bands, the watch for me wears larger, closer to a 41 to a 41 and a half millimeter on my wrist, but still doesn't feel overbearing. A big thanks to the nylon stretch Velcro strap that is extremely comfortable, infinitely adjustable, and pairs well with the added flex offered by the swinging lug design. Turning the watches over, we have a pair of exhibition case backs offering at least a partial view of the third party calibers from Salida and Etta. Starting with the regulator, we have the Salida SW266, an elaborate grade caliber making this regulator layout possible while providing 38 hours of power reserve and a traditional four Hertz or 28,800 vibration per hour beat rate. Moving over to the day date, we have the ETA 2863, a day date variant of the ETA 2892 family of calibers, again, providing 38 hours of power reserve while oscillating at a Swiss standard of four Hertz. Both calibers are finished in a very utilitarian fashion, and frankly, we're never going to be a standout feature of these attention-grabbing watches. Speaking anecdotally to the accuracy presented by both of these, the regulator kept time at plus five to plus seven seconds a day, and the day-date close by at plus six to plus eight seconds a day. I know some people are going to probably put down the fact that these are third-party calibers, but again, if they were going to have this display as a regulator and then looking at this day-date position, there pretty much is no other option out there if you're trying to keep some price competitiveness because no one really else is offering a regulator movement from a third-party perspective and kind of these more out there type of designs. The movement is dictating the design and this is really what allowed all this to happen. So now with these Louis Arard and Alan Silberstein pieces, I know some people are probably not even watching it to this point because many people will write off these watches immediately even if they're not for them. And quite frankly, these watches really aren't even for me. I don't think I would personally wear one of these, but that's not why I think these watches are cool. I'm not judging this based on my own ability to wear this or not. Why I think these watches are important and why I love what Louis Rard is doing is their first looking at the world of independent watchmaking and thinking about how can you be different? Independent watchmaking to me, and really why I loved watch collecting in the first place, is all about individual expression, being able to have something on your wrist that could be a almost an embodiment of your personality and what you like. And these watches, I think, perfectly encapsulate this idea and doing it in a price range that typical independent watchmakers are not going to even approach because there just simply isn't as much money there. They're gonna focus on that $20,000 and up bespoke type of timepiece but you're getting a combination of that, that type of approach, but getting it in a more attainable package. Now these are still watches that are around $4,000, so not inexpensive, but in the grand scheme of independent watchmaking, these are some of the more intriguing points of value. And this is why these watches I think have been very collectible. These Alan Silbersteins are so recognizable in terms of their approach. It's helped resurrect the, uh, the career of Alan Silberstein and then also I think allowed Louis Arard to emerge as this cool independent brand under $10,000 and there's not many of them. And even if you're somebody that detests these designs, think that this looks very juvenile in its approach of color and shapes, even if that is your stance, if you're also somebody, which I know is probably the case, that is so overly critical about brands that, oh, they're just doing the same thing over and over again, no innovation, nothing new, nothing exciting, 
I, I think that you at least have to look at this, even if you don't act with your wallet and appreciate what Louis Arard is doing. They're offering a fresh approach, collaborating with some cool people, and offering these in price ranges that I think many independent brands are not even caring about because the dollar amount isn't there. As watch enthusiasts, we sometimes take ourselves too seriously, myself included, and I think it's fun to be able to look at a watch and a brand that is able to have a lighthearted approach to how they design and approach things while still having a respect for the craft. I think this is what these watches do. And even if you don't like them, I think you should at least acknowledge, maybe not with your wallet, but with your just own admiration that, hey, I respect what they're doing. All right, guys, now that is my take looking at these Louis Arard and Alan Silverstein watches. If you enjoyed looking at these more independent brands on this channel, I know sometimes people you know, don't like it as much. They don't always get as many views, but if you do like seeing more of this, definitely would appreciate the encouragement with the thumbs up and a subscription, that really does help. Also definitely check out teddybaldesner.com, full authorized dealer of 30 brands, quick and fast fulfillment, dedicated customer support, and a full factory warranty for all the products that we offer. But guys, thank you again so much for watching. Be well, and I'll see you all very soon.